So, like many of you, I'm looking forward to the new Scream film coming out this weekend. I'll be seeing it most likely tonight and posting my review of it tomorrow. In the meantime, I wanted to take a look back at the Scream series as prep for the new one. So let's take this time to celebrate Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's Scream series, shall we? Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Now I have to admit something right off the bat. I'm not the biggest Scream fan. I am recognized that the first one was a quality movie. At the time, it provided a pretty smart take on the slasher genre while being a fun slasher in and of itself. Sure, it sparked a lot of self-referential stuff that popped up in almost every horror film for the last three decades, where a character acknowledges the horror movie cliches they are experiencing just before the characters succumb to them. Yes, Scream did it well in 1996. Though the slasher genre had started to become self-aware quite a while before it. Films like Student Bodies, Pandemonium, Wacko, National Lampoon's Class Reunion, Slumber Party Massacre, and even Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, all took stabs at the genre, twisted expectations, pointed out its cliches and faults, and looked at slashers through a comedic lens long before Scream came along. But Scream made the biggest splash and that deserves some recognition. For the longest time, I honestly didn't like the Scream series because I felt like the whole film looked down upon the slasher genre. It seems that the filmmakers thought they were smarter and better than the very films that inspired them, even though they made films sporting a lot of those cliches in the past. Still, like many of you, I'd look at the original Scream as a classic, no matter what it wrought on the horror genre in its wake. If anything, it was a call for the genre to do better, be scarier, be smarter. Sure, it spawned an untold number of films with posters of young actors lined up and looking intensely at the camera, but it also forced slasher films to get out of the rut they were in. And while there were always going to be lazy slasher films, there's also an abundance of films that take the slasher concept to new and exciting places, like The Strangers, Butchers, Terrifier, The Final Girls, Lake Bodom, Bereavement and Malevolence, and The Hatchet series, just to name a few. Finally, I never really thought Ghostface was that scary. It was just some spastic guy in a robe who gets tossed and kicked around a lot. The glittery costume and scream mask never really instilled chills that Jason's hockey mask, Michael's shape mask, Leatherface's skin mask, or even Freddy's burned face created. For me, the fact that he talked so much on the phone and so little while attacking was weird. It didn't help that I knew he or she was going to be different every time under the mask, so the mystery aspect really got in the way of me appreciating the killer in the ways I did the other icons. There's a lot to say about the first Scream. It's fun despite its self-referential tendencies, the cast is young and energetic. I still laugh out loud at pretty much anything Matthew Lillard says, especially liver alone, man. Liver alone. It's interesting to see Rose McGowan in a Weinstein-produced film, given the controversy that came from it. Nev Campbell makes for a great heroine. David Arquette is fun, comic relief. And it even caught the 15 minutes Jamie Kennedy was tolerable. When I revisit it, I found myself laughing a lot and also wincing quite a bit at the very visceral kills. Drew Barrymore's kill, the stabbing back and forth between Billy and Stu, all extremely palpable and gory effects. It's a truly great classic and deserves all the praise that it gets. Scream 2 had its moments as well. I love the sound booth scene and the scene where Sydney and her friend are trapped in the cop car. The opener with Omar Epps and Jada Pinkett was fun, even though it succumbs to the 
black guy dies first cliche. But the problems with this series really shine through with Scream 2 as, in order to rouse suspicion, they simply bulked up the cast with so many players and there really isn't enough time in the movie to get to know any of them. While the first film really simply focused on a handful of likable characters, Scream 2 doubled down on that and it made me care about half as much as the first. Scream 2 is bigger, louder, more obnoxious, and it definitely loses points for that god-awful scene where Jerry O'Connell stands on the cafeteria table and sings. It does get points for killing off Jamie Kennedy, though. I like the reasoning behind the murders, tying them to the original film, but the resolution was out of the blue and unsatisfying. Moving on to Scream 3, which I feel was the low point of the entire Scream franchise. Holy shit, this is the most Weinsteinian of Weinstein films. This film feels like a written confession by Harvey Weinstein himself in movie form. Every gal in this movie talks about how they had to sleep with someone in order to get their role. This Hollywood-centric installment is sleazy from beginning to end. Revealing that Sidney's mother was used as a chew toy by producers and directors as a youngster is simply gross. The whole final act takes place in a mansion with secret rooms, automatic locks, and all kinds of references to the casting couch. It's almost as if Weinstein was flaunting all of his indiscretions in the public's faces at this point. Seeing every actress in this film talk about what they had to do in order to be where they are in the script felt a little too inside baseball for me, and left me less scared and entertained, and more with that grimy, I need a shower feeling. Plus, what the hell was up with Courtney Cox's hair? And the less said about Parker Posey, the better. So unbelievably bad. They also introduced this nightmare dream element that really doesn't fit, which is ironic since Wes Craven is directed it. Scream 3 did not age well, and I don't recommend you go back and watch it. Now, Scream 4 is a step in the right direction. The multiple openers was a clever idea. The addition of Hayden Pantiera's Kirby and that creepy Culkin were good additions to the cast. Still, I found the pace was off, and the film really rushed into the killings before all of the cast was even introduced or reintroduced. Once again, the cast is enormous. Some of them are simply old pastiches of more memorable characters in past movies. Others were simply introduced to be killed almost immediately. While the first Scream paid homage to the slasher genre, Scream 4 felt more like it paid homage to the Scream series. It told a Cliff Notes version of Scream, whizzing through the story at a breakneck pace and killing characters before you even had a chance to recognize what CW show they were swiped from. The final reveal of the killer was much better than Scream 2 and 3 combined. I was pleasantly surprised, but with the three leads showing their age and their plot armor intervening way too much, I felt the series had run its course and Scream 4 was a worthy send-off to the series. So that brings us to Scream 2022, the fifth installment. Now, I've avoided spoilers and rumors, I'll avoid them in my review as well, but I will toss out what I'd like to see in this one and maybe a hypothesis or two. I'd love to see one of the three main characters, Sidney, Dewey, or Gale, actually die in this one. One of them simply has to go this time around. This plot armor has worn down to its nub. I fear in the age we live in, Dewey is the one, unfortunately, who will get the axe, or the knife, as it is, which would only highlight the strength of the other two leading ladies. At the same time, I think it'd be an interesting twist to make one of the three main characters one of the killers. Maybe even have Sidney, Dewey, or Gale killing people and never getting caught throughout the entire Scream franchise. Wouldn't that be an interesting twist? I think so. I've interviewed and met the Radio Silence guys making this new installment. They're smart and interesting fellows, and the buzz is there that this new film is not only going to entertain, but reinvigorate the entire franchise. I sure hope so. 
I hope it celebrates the horror genre and takes this franchise to new heights. At the very least, I hope it's a fun time at the movies. I'm stoked. I'm excited. I'll be there watching it tonight. I'll let you know how it goes, but in the meantime, let me know down in the comments section what you think of the Scream franchise and what you expect from this new Scream film. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're Yeah.